Delta variant as we speak accounts for at least 93% of coronavirus cases here in the U.S. Joining us now to shed light on the latest COVID headlines is Dr. Jen Cottle. Doctor, thank you for joining us here on the National Desk. Thank you. How contagious is the Delta variant compared to other variants that we've seen in the past? Sure. So we do know that Delta is very contagious. It is highly transmissible. Um, and just for comparison, the Alpha variant, which is sort of the, one of the early variants that we saw, um, you know, if if somebody had the Alpha variant, they could uh, relatively easily infect two other people around them say, who are unvaccinated. You compare that with a Delta variant. Uh, somebody with a Delta variant could actually infect up to five or so people around them who are unvaccinated. So you see, as a comparison, the Delta variant is is more easily transmissible, it, it's more easily spread. And of course, some of the latest news we've gotten in the last few weeks is that people who are vaccinated can actually carry uh, high amounts of viral load and be able to transmit it as well. Well, based on the severity of the Delta variant, how concerned are you about future mutations of the virus? Are we going to see many others just following in these footsteps? So other variants and mutations is always possible. And, you know, something I always like to remind us is that it's always possible to have something that is maybe even more transmissible or more dangerous than Delta in and of itself. Um, but, but there are things that we can do to sort of stem that likelihood or possibility. Um, the less chance that the virus has to replicate, uh, the less chance it has to create variations of itself and mutations. And what that means is we need to get vaccinated. That means all of us who are able to get vaccinated should be getting vaccinated. And we should also be wearing our masks and doing all the other things that will help stem the spread of the uh, the, the, the virus in, in the first place, which will hopefully mitigate the, the, the chance or reduce the chance of getting those uh, variants, uh, whatever they might be. Well, students, as you know, are heading back to the classrooms this fall. That's stirring up a lot of debate. What are the precautions you think they should be taking to guarantee safety for both students and staff? Yeah, you know, our, our, our kids are, you know, my my, my, I, my heart is really with our kids and our families at this point because kids are going back to school. We know right now the vaccine is not approved for uh, kids under the age of 12. That leaves a, a large population of students that are vulnerable, which, by the way, is another reason why the rest of us who can get vaccinated should be getting vaccinated to help protect them. And on top of that, they're going back into schools, which, by the way, is a good idea because we need kids in schools for learning and, and so many other things. But keeping them safe becomes even that much more tricky. You know, masks are going to be and are imperative. Uh, trying and making sure that the kids who can get vaccinated are getting vaccinated. Uh, still, the safety protocols that we know about, social distancing, et cetera, um, especially as we know that Delta variant uh, is, is rising and cases are rising in, in many parts of this country. Uh, we've got just about 30 seconds left, but I do want to ask you, New York City Mayor uh, Bill de Blasio announced earlier this week that if you're taking part in indoor activities, you're going to have to show proof of vaccination. We're talking about restaurants, gyms and others. Uh, I'm curious what impact you think this will have on unvaccinated individuals. Does it incentivize people or discourage them from getting vaccinated? Well, I hope it incentivizes them. I mean, and, and actually, it's not just New York City. We're actually seeing the entire country, as we know, whether it's companies or schools or or or, or other organizations putting in mandates and requirements. Well, I really am hoping that this is going to sort of put those who may be on the fence or those who have not been willing to get the vaccine to say, hey, look, if I'm, if I want to live the life that I, I want to live, I need to get vaccinated. Uh, so I'm, I'm hopeful that this will help. It, it also will help keep the rest of us safe, which is what we need. All right, Dr. Jen Cottle, great advice as always. Thank you so much for joining us here on the National Desk. Thank you.